DITRH is a YouTube channel run by David Weiss, a flat earth stalwart who is pretty high up in the pecking order when it comes to the US flat earthers. He runs a podcast called the Flat Earth Debate Podcast and he has been on this channel before. No, because the Earth doesn't spin that fast. Plus, there isn't a giant ball underneath us. Again, our angular velocity. He is also very proud of the fact that he interviewed Owen Benjamin about Flat Earth, the two of them feeding off each other's incredulity. Well today, David Weiss has hit the tinfoil big time, going after the space shuttle in one of the most ridiculous conspiracy theories out there. Hello all, thank you very much for joining me for another episode of Tinfoil Tuesday with me, Simon Dan. Before we begin today, you may be curious about my attire. Well, Rick Lucas from All Things The Ville, at Things The Ville on Twitter, sent me this shirt that I'm wearing today. As many of you know, I am a huge football fan, soccer for you guys in the US, and if there's one thing I absolutely love, it's grassroots football. Louisville City FC are one of the up-and-coming teams in the USL Championships Eastern Conference and are having an absolutely fantastic season. Thank you, Rick, for the shirt, and huge amounts of luck to Lou City for the rest of the season. Let's hope you can do better than my team, hey? The less said about that, the better. Right, on with today's video, which focuses on DITRH's video entitled The Space Shuttle Blimp. I know, I know, but he is serious. Let's see how he's going to spin this one. Does it? DITRH thinks that the space shuttle acts like a rocket-assisted balloon. So like a raccoon. I didn't make that up, by the way. That is an actual thing, completely unrelated to space shuttles. T minus 15 seconds. The sound suppression water system has been activated. Okay. We have a go for main engine start. And we have main engine start. Two, one, booster ignition and liftoff of Discovery, celebrating its 25th birthday by racking up science and supplies to the space station. Houston now controlling the midnight ride of Rick Sterko and his crew to the International Space Station. Discovery rolling onto the proper alignment for its eight and a half minute ride to orbit. Four and a half million pounds of hardware and humans taking aim on the International Outpost. Why wouldn't you change the cameras for this sort of thing? It's exciting to see the engine start close up. It makes sense to move to a wider angle shot as the shuttle got higher. And again, a close up of the engines while in flight is a nice touch. It seems that whatever happened here, you would find ways to pick holes. I mean, if it was a single unedited shot, you would say, why are they only showing us one side of the space shuttle? What are they hiding? Minus 15 seconds. The sound suppression water system has been activated. Yes, sparks are required to ignite any hydrogen that's left over in the immediate area to avoid an external explosion. They're not actually part of the ignition process. Yeah, Well, when the engines of the shuttle first start up, the force of those engines actually bend the top part of the external tank backwards by up to one meter. 
Now, as the shuttle is attached to that external fuel tank, there's no surprise that it would move a little bit as well. After a few seconds, the tank swings back to vertical and the shuttle is ready to go. And we have main engine start. Two, one. 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 And we have main engine start. Doesn't matter how many times you play it, that fact remains the same. Two, one. Booster ignition and liftoff of Discovery, celebrating its 25th birthday by racking up science and supplies to the space station. Booster ignition and liftoff of Discovery, celebrating its 25th birthday by racking up science and supplies to the space station. Houston now controlling the midnight ride of Rick Sterko and his crew to the International Space Station. Discovery rolling on to the proper alignment. Discovery rolling on to the proper alignment. Discovery rolling on to the proper alignment. The fake shuttle part. Now this is just a lie. The roll is required for a few reasons. Firstly, the shuttle is rolled in a heads down orientation to assist with communications with the ground. Also, there's instruments in the cargo bay that are now pointed towards Earth. Secondly, by turning the shuttle downwards, it alleviates stress that was being placed on it by the atmosphere rushing past it. Finally, the shuttle needs to be pointed in the right direction. So, yeah. Rick Sterko and his crew to the International Space Station. Discovery rolling on to the proper alignment for its eight and a half minute ride to orbit. Four and a half million pounds of hardware and humans taking aim on the international outpost. Seriously? Where is this wobbly filming coming from? Clearly from a handheld camera that zoomed in. Try getting some binoculars and tracking the ISS as it passes over with them. Then you'll see why. Well, it does twang. That's the official name for the movement given by NASA. But you know what? I mean, if you were NASA and you were using a fake space shuttle tied to a balloon, then you would definitely show the balloon bouncing a little bit at takeoff. That would definitely be something you'd do to, you know, to expose yourself. You wouldn't try covering that up at all, would you? Start, two, one, boost the ignition, and lift off. You wouldn't know what cloud heights were though, would you? Because it would be in a book about meteorology. And you're not a great fan of books, are you, David? Solid rocket booster separation confirmed. Guidance now converging. Discoveries on board computers commanding the main engine nozzle. If it really was 20 miles away, then it's very unlikely that the camera would have picked up the sound from that separation. It's much more likely that the mics from the shuttle picked up that sound, or it was added later on for effect. Here is footage of Atlantis launching live in 2009, where there is no sound. Swivel, aiming the shuttle for its precise target in space for main engine cutoff. Okay, you sound good. Yes, nothing more than a Hollywood production that you can see with your own eyes. Discovery Houston, negative return. Copy, negative return.
If I showed this to family, friends and strangers, I would need to take earplugs with me because of the incessant laughing afterwards. Yes, 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 you and your lot have been saying that for years. You've literally made no impact. The space shuttle was completely real. But if you honestly believe that it was some sort of inflatable blimp that flew through the air at thousands of miles per hour, with an ignition chamber reaching temperatures of up to 3000 degrees C right next to that, then you are completely and utterly deluded. I'm sorry. Right, that brings this episode of Tin Fall Tuesday to a lovely close. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed it, then please, please do like and subscribe. I have been Simon Dan. Have yourselves a great week, and I'll see you all on Friday where we're going back to D Marble. See you then. <laughs>